I've had a lot of time to think about my calling recently. This has been a summer of transition for all of us, I think. For me, it has meant moving to Atlanta last month so that my husband could start his new appointment. I am living on EBC campus in the setting of my new life, but the timing of that life hasn't quite caught up, caught up with me. There have been times in these last few weeks when I have questioned my calling. Why did I move from this lovely Tampa Bay area where I felt at home and there was always a beach nearby? Why am I, what am I doing giving up a career I love, a career that I know I'm good at in exchange for this unfamiliar path? Who do I think I am that I can do this, that I should be doing this, that God truly called me? I have known since I was a little girl that I wanted to be a writer. In high school, I decided I would be a journalist. I wanted to investigate corruption, report on wars overseas, and write long stories about interesting people. I spent the next several years preparing for that career through study and internships and jobs that honed my writing and reporting skills. I moved to New York City to write at a magazine and eventually landed a job as a crime reporter in the Orlando area. I never thought for a second, as my career began in earnest, that God would call me to be anything else but a journalist and a writer. One weekend, a speaker came to my church in Orlando and talked about his street-level ministry with such passion that I felt my own heart burning to help the down and out. He talked about how Jesus never called his disciples to live comfortable lives, but instead live radically in service to him. I had hoped that journalism would send me to uncomfortable places, to impoverished neighborhoods or war-torn countries. I envisioned bringing light to dark places with my stories. But what if the light that I was called to shine wasn't my own writing, but God's good news? What would that life look like? At the time, I didn't know. I didn't see a way that my life could change that radically. You could say I heard a calling, but couldn't see the path I was supposed to take. Not yet. Several years later, after I moved to St. Petersburg, I met someone, the wonderful and handsome man that will eventually become my husband, um, served at the St. Petersburg Corps. Through him, I became acquainted with the amazing community and the compelling ministry of the Salvation Army. Still, it would be a while before I could imagine leaving journalism. I had always been sure that my calling was writing, not speaking, and I was certain God had no full-time plans for me in ministry. More than that, I struggled theologically with the concept of women in the role of leadership in the church. I wondered if I could, would miss the sacrament of communion, and I questioned if I would ever get used to the uniform. Almost every step along this path, God slowly revealed felt like a step in the opposite direction of how I imagined my life to be. Through it all, however, the compulsion of the gospel remained steadfast. I desired to do more to advance his good news to those who needed it. I wanted my life to be radically devoted to reaching the lost. On a beach not far from here, I spent a day in prayer considering this concept of my calling. I felt like God gave me a choice between the life I, have carved, I had carved out for myself and the radical life I had asked for all those years ago, one that came with an amazing life partner that I had been praying for as well. In Ephesians 1, 11 and 12, it says, In him we are also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose and his will, in order that we, who were the first to put our hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. It's astonishing for me to think that God planned the steps of my life to bring me here, speaking in front of you, about to return to school. It wasn't my plan, but I'm excited for the adventure he's laid out for me. I would like to pay, thank the St. Pete Corps for their support and their love along the journey. I could not have asked for a more nurturing environment to start this path, so thank you. I also would like to thank my amazing family for raising me in the deep heritage of faith and surrounding me in prayer always. <clears throat> I would have accomplished less, endeavored less, and been less grounded in Christ without your constant encouragement, accountability, and counsel. I love you all. And to my husband, thank you for slowly guiding me through Salvation Army culture 
keyword slowly. <laughs> I didn't know dating you at the time would turn my world upside down, but knowing that now, I would exchange it for nothing less. I know I still have challenges ahead of me. I know there will be doubts and trials in the next two years, but as it says in 1 Peter 1 and 7, these have come so that you, so that the proven genuineness of your faith may result in praise, glory, and honor when Christ is revealed. I praise God for the opportunity to test my faith, to deepen my relationship with him, and advance the gospel. Thank you.